Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdillahu fala mudilla la wa man yudlil fala hadiya la wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la wa nashhadu anna sayyidina wa sanadina wa shafi'ana Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو معكم أينما كنتم وقال الله تعالى في آية أخرى ونحن أقرب إليه من حبل الوريد سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك سيد الأولين والآخرين محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله كما سنديت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الحمد لله for most if not everyone in the world tonight will be the 27th night of Ramadan for many of you listening live right now for you it is actually already the night of the 27th of Ramadan and inshallah tonight we will keep it short because this is not a night to listen to long talks and i apologize i have a i had, I had mentioned that it would be short a series of short talks but for me one hour is short and two hours is average and three hours is ideal but inshallah we'll keep it very short tonight uh, and i all of us will inshallah especially those for whom we are listening at night should really try to maximize these last odd nights. There are only two left tonight and the 29th night. And in many places also the Khatam of Quran takes place in Salat al Taraweeh, often on one of these two nights, the 27th or 29th night. So if there's any time in our year where we could spend four, five, six hours worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is these two nights of the 27th and 29th especially given that the 21st, 23rd, and 25th nights have already passed from us. May Allah Ta'ala accept all and any of our ibadah, and may He give us tawfiq to do more and more ibadah in these last few precious days and nights and moments of Ramadan. So the second topic I had mentioned to you yesterday, that I wanted to speak about today, inshallah, about will I change is will I change in terms of my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And here again I want to begin exactly where I began yesterday. That we should make so much hamd and shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter if maybe there will be times when we might feel distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially there will be times when we sin and we disobey against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments. That we will legitimately feel distant from him because we made ourselves distant from Quran al-Kareem, distant from the Sunnah of Nabi al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, distant from the deen. And it's not possible to be distant from Kitabullah, distant from Sunnah of Rasulullah, distant from Ibadat of Allah and somehow still be Kareem to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But notwithstanding that fact that sometimes we, especially maybe before Ramadan, we felt that distance and especially during this Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, we felt that qurb, that nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. Those feelings arising in our hearts again. But first and foremost, we must do a lot of hamd and shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not even more distant from Him. We should do hamd and shukr and fall in sujood of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that forget a distant relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not sever and disconnect this whole relationship altogether and did not decree that we should be deprived of Iman, Al-Ayyad Billah, Al-Aman, al hafiz Because again, there's so many things that we've done in our life that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, He would have been completely in His right to Himself change our relationship with us and to end it entirely because we have proven to be unworthy as His mu'mineen, as Muslimin, as His ibad. So first and foremost, we should do shukr and hum to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this relationship. Fundamentally, which relationship? The relationship of iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman billah. 
that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that from His Hidayah and His Karam and His Fazl, we are from the Allah Dina Amanu and the Mu'minun. Even though we have proven ourselves over and over again, perhaps to be unworthy of being from the Mu'mineen. And this is again the Wahhab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He bestowed this gift of Iman upon us without us deserving it or earning it or being worthy of it or even being truly grateful and honoring it. وَمَا قَدَرَ اللَّهُ حَقَّ قَدْرِ That they were, we are also amongst those who have not been able to truly esteem and value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He wishes to be valued, as He is right and as He deserves to be valued. That said, all of us, one of our greatest dreams in our whole life and the purpose and goal and objective of our life and something that we should have rekindled with deep earnest in this month of Ramadan is I want to change in the sense that I want to change my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more loving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to change once and for all. If nothing else can change about me, at least the way I am with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could first and foremost change. And alhamdulillah, we all experience this happening in Ramadan. The very fact and act of fasting in Ramadan changes this relationship. So in a very well-known hadith, of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam known as Hadith Qudsi where Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I am with my servant as he draws near to me and he draws near to me with nothing more beloved to me than that which I have made fard upon them. So it means the greatest way to improve our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to observe the fara'id. And Ramad fasting in Ramadan is one of the major fard acts. And although we are not 100% following the fard of salah or 100% following the fard of controlling our anger or 100% following the fard of never saying uff to our parents or not always 100% following the fard in so many things Alhamdulillah, mashallah, only do the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many mu'mineen actually 100% at least in terms of the outward fast they 100% fast each and every day of the month of Ramadan and that really we should really think you know often we do think and it is true that the reason our hearts feel closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends His special mercy and barakat in this month. But another very important dimension of it is the real reason we feel closer in our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan is actually we're experiencing what's supposed to be the norm for a believer. In other words, we're experiencing the qurb bil fara'id, the amount of qurb that a person feels and experiences when they 100% obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's not khas, it's not mukhtas, it's not exclusively, uniquely tied with the fard fast of Ramadan. That qurb, that nearness of relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for all the fara'id, all the mandatory acts. But we didn't do the other things 100%. So that means if I really truly say I want to change or I want to maintain whatever change has come in my heart in this month of Ramadan in my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is what I have to change. I have to change my sub-par compliance with Allah ta'ala's commands and make them 100%. Whether that means 100% Fajr Salah, that means 100% proper behavior, 100% staying away from sin, 100% staying away from riba and haram and interest, all interest which is haram, Morg be it mortgage, be it anything, 100 be it earning and working from a bank, or 100% staying away from all unlawful food, unlawful earning, unlawful dressing, unlawful speaking, unlawful hearing, unlawful looking, That is the way that literally outside Ramadan, after Ramadan, a person can feel the same closeness to Allah that we felt inside the month of Ramadan. 
Okay, so the first thing was to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our relationship has not gotten worse and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be grateful to Him for the increase of this relationship in this month and to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the last few days that we don't want to lose that connection, that reconnection that we got with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month. And then the third thing is to make a deep, firm niyyah, stronger with the niyyah's irada azam, a firm resolve and determination Insha'Allah, in our hearts and in our minds, in our very ruh, arwa, our souls, that we will follow all the faraid after this month. The fourth thing that we would have observed in this month is what I said in the beginning, that when we increase our connection with Kitabullah, it will increase our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not about the amount, it was about the heart. The reason I'm mentioning this is because after Ramadan, Illa mashallah, and some person is, you know, Hafiz of Quran or Hafiz of Quran and maybe also teaching Hifz of Quran, right? It's unlikely that most people will be able to recite as much Quran and especially listen to as much Quran as they did in this month of Ramadan. So the quantity of our connection to Quran al especially again for those of us who are not Hafiz, will almost certainly not be the same after Ramadan. But it's not about the quantity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, ayama ma'dudat, it's all limited. Everything is limited in quantity. It also means our mahdud, our limited worship, grants us the la mahdud, unlimited akhirah of Jannah. So it's not a quantitative analysis from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, even the most noble person would only get Jannah for 100 years. What really what happened in Ramadan we need to retain is our heart's connection with Qur'an al -Karim, our longing to recite Qur'an, our fikr, our worry, our concern that, oh, I have not yet recited my uh, recited from the Qur'an al -Karim today. My desire and enjoyment and pleasure to listen to Qur'an al -Karim in Salat al-Taraweeh. So it's very important, especially again for the Ghair Hufaz, that we should continue this. And a lot of us, myself included, we get slack in our listening. And mashallah, there's so many beautiful recitations by so many Qurra, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of them and preserve all of their families and children, descendants until Yom ad -Din, and keep all of their descendants firmly on Quran al -Karim. I mean, So many beautiful recitations that we can listen to. So to keep that, especially for the Ghair Hufas. And you know, it wouldn't actually be that difficult to listen to one juz every day, even after Ramadan. And it's actually very easy to listen to half a juz every day. And that way we could at least be hearing the Qur'an al -Karim regularly. And that would have a very deep impact on our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ahkam or commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kitabullah, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is sacred revelation, yani Qur'an al -Karim. Third thing is we increased in our ibadah in this month. And especially, I would say, in that our du'a. But also, maybe before that, I want to add one more thing, is our tasbih and our hamd. Whether that was the extra tasbihat we made in ruku and sujood and taraweeh, or different uh, sunnah adhkar, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah adheem that we were reciting, or even just because the Qur'an al karim is full of tasbih and hamd, how many times we recited or heard the tasbih and hamd. So the very important dhikr that we should continue. Yes, one way to continue that dhikr is to, let's say, recite 100 times in the morning or 100 times morning and evening. Another way is as you walk and you, again, reflect on the signs of Allah's mountains creation to on your tongue whenever possible and in your heart otherwise to have the tasbih and hamd of Allah's mountain and that feeling of tasbih. Because what happens to the heart that if we do not engage our heart in glorifying the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the dunya starts getting glory in our heart. This is what I, some things from yesterday that were left out, is that the dunya becomes attractive, the dunya becomes glorious, literally glorious. So one, remedy, one reason for that is the lack of tasbih. And again, the lack of feeling when we recite tasbih. So to really say those athkar of subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa la akbar or subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al -adheem. or in our in our salah and ruku subhanallah rabbi al -adheem. or in sujood subhanallah rabbi al -ala. or when we start in the thana subhanakallah right subhanakallah wa bihamdik 
So to really feel that feeling of tasbih and hamd. And that often happened to us in Ramadan, right? How much hum did we really feel from our hearts? Even maybe if we didn't express it in our in our tongue, we didn't maybe even say the word hamd, but how much hum did we feel when we used to break our fast and eat the iftar? How much tasbih did we feel in our heart when we would drink that water after our fast? So it's that feeling of tasbih and hamd keeps a person connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are the two main things add to that then is the tahleel and takbir so la ilaha illallah and Allahu Akbar and again we felt this in Ramadan the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala irrespective of how many times maybe a person made the dhikr of the kalima la ilaha illallah but really in Ramadan we have one focus one goal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the feeling of Tawheed, right? So one is the theological meaning of Tawheed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God is one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and alone and only and no partner, right? One is the feeling of Tawheed that the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dominates me so much that He is my one and only and my entire life is for Him and Him alone and for His sake. So again, the athkar help us in this. La ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika la. Lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu yuhyi wa yumitu bi yadihil khair wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Okay, even if a person can't recite that hundred times, even to recite it once, a few times, when you have free time, when you're walking around, sitting after salah. And very beneficial then, and this is why so many of the true Siddiqeen, Mashaykh, and all the Siddiqeen, really ulama, sal, sulaha of this ummah, used to recite with abundance, La ilaha illallah. Because it helped to reorient us, reconnect us, redirect us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally is the takbir, Allahu Akbar. Again, a simple thing. These are the things that are happening in salah. We don't reflect on each component, each sentence in salah is impacting the heart. And so one of the blessings of the Raweeh, right, after being able to hear more recitation of Qur'an, is to hear and to say Allah Akbar more than we normally do. So it was this act of professing and feeling the takbir. So professing, okay, we did when we prayed more salah. Feeling. You really feel, I think in some ways, when we feel that hunger and thirst, you feel the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because in order to feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness, Sometimes we have to let ourselves feel, indeed even embrace our own weakness. So this is one very important part of the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ذَعِيفَ That indeed humanity has been created weak. And He is Akbar, the greatest, the greatest of the great. To whether we felt that in our hunger, whether we felt that in our thirst, to remember the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, if we don't fill our heart with that feeling of greatness, then the dunya will feel great to us. The dunya will become the one and only objective for us. The dunya will feel like it has glory for us. The dunya will be that which we want to be praised in or that which we think is praiseworthy. Acquiring dunya, having more attainment, accomplishment, achievement, becoming more praiseworthy. So you can just see from these four things, tasbih, tahmeed, or just simply hamd, tahleel, la ilaha illallah, and takbir. So also very important, athkar, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyya al adim or to recite ayatul kursi. All of these things are features in our deen. So we get these feelings and use these four feelings to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was happening in Ramadan. And this again can continue after Ramadan. It's not about the quantity. Even if just a few times we just say this one sentence, SubhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar. <clears throat> with feeling, with ponder, maybe even don't repeat it so fast. Say it and then let it linger. Don't repeat it so fast. Sometimes when we're trying to do dhikr and trying to reach the number 100, where it becomes like this rapid recurring, uh, recurrence of statement, takrar. And then that prevents the taqrar, it prevents the qirar, the qirar of the, you know, the indwelling and the imprinting of the feeling and meaning of these sentences in our heart. So recite it once, go slowly, break it down, reflect upon it, 
don't let yourself, sometimes you could even do it this way, sometimes, that don't even let yourself recite it a second time until you really feel you have pondered and absorbed and felt that first recitation. Say, okay, Ya Allah, I recite it once in the state of ghafla to snap myself out of the ghafla. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, la akbar. I'm still in ghafla, let me recite it a few more times to snap myself out. And then you feel it first, maybe a little bit, and now pause. So now I can feel it more, reflect it more, then recite, then feel, reflect. We have to be more dynamic and heartful as opposed to mindless in our recitation of it, God. Notwithstanding that any form in which a person does the verbal utterance of any dhikr is still beneficial, but we want more. We need to take it more to another level. And also I will be very clear that one reason I'm saying all of these things now is because the best chance you have, listen to what I'm about to say very carefully, the best chance you have outside of Ramadan to have all of these feelings is immediately after Ramadan. So this should now be our plan is now to maximize the next two, three days and nights, but then to ride on that wave of Ramadan after Ramadan. It's going to be all about our shawal. The quantity won't stay the same. And even the quality, obviously it's not possible Allah mashallah to stay the same, but we're going to try our best outside Shubal. So it's not the change taking place in Ramadan, it's going to be the change that will take place after Ramadan. The change that will remain after Ramadan. Okay. The next major feature of our ibadah was our praying extra salah in this month. Even if a person just prayed salat al taraweeh So again, you not be able to pray 20 such long rakats after this month. We should try the at least two rakats a day. Whether that is tahiyatul wudu, whether that is tahiyatul masjid, whether that is ishraq, whether that is duha, whether that is part of awabin, whether that is tahajjud, whether that is just two nafal at any point, or salat al toba, salat al shukr, as these are some names ulama have given. Right? But two rakats a day. Because that extra, you what we really saw in Ramadan, this extra ibadat, such as Satu Dravi, the extra goes a very long way in our deen. This is a lesson for us to learn this month. Because that's the second part of that hadith Qudsi I mentioned to you. So the, second, the first part was that my servant draws near to me with nothing more beloved to me than that which I have made. Allah Ta'ala is saying, Fard upon them. And then they continue to draw near to me at the secondary level, secondary to the primary one. It's not that the Qurb bin Nawafil are greater Qurb than the Qurb al-Faraid. At a secondary level, additionally, they, they continue to draw even near to me by that which is optional, extra Nawafil for them. This is the way, way the word Nafil came. This, is, this word is used by, uh, in this hadith. So we should try to pray two rakahs. And one secret I will tell you, not secret, so not secret, but one tip I will tell you is just try to pray this early. You know, don't wait until, okay, I'm going to go to sleep and then wake up for tahajjud. Just pray it early. So if you go to sleep after fajr, whenever you wake up, whenever you wake up, it may be a shock, it may be duha, it may be, mashallah, for some people, dohar. whenever you wake up, you pray two extra rakah. You make you wake up in the morning and you make your wudu. You know, most people they wake up, they shower, they wash their face. If you're not gonna shower, you're just gonna don't just wash your face, then if you're gonna wash your face, make wudu. And then right after that, whatever that morning wake up is, pray two rakah salah. I was reminded of uh, just now as I was saying this too, a very beautiful hadith. So again, I'm reminded just now, so I don't have the Arabic in front of me, but Allahu Akbar, a very beautiful hadith that, you know, many of you would know. Ajeeb. <sighs> Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw, and again I'm summarizing the meanings, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw the footprints of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. The footprints of a person whose society, a lot of jahiliya Arab society was racist, right? So the footprints of a Habashi in Jannah. 
And what did it mean? Actually, the way Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi explained it, I would say footfalls. The footfalls of the footsteps of Sayyidina Bilal Radat on who left footprints in Jannah. And as whenever he would walk and place his feet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Jannah. So you can say like the land of Jannah, the earth of Jannah. To honor the footfalls of Sayyidina Bilal Radat and have an impression of a footprint. And this was shown to Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then when Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he met Sayyidina Bilal and he told him. Allah, I can't even imagine, right, what Sayyidina Bilal would have felt. Hmm? What a, what a bashara, how happy his heart would have been. What ecstasy and joy and delight and happiness would his heart have felt. And then look at the, how the hadith continues that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also very happy but also curious and he asked Sayyidina Bilal that what is it that you do? Allah Akbar, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu did not know. Allah Ta'ala did not tell. This also the relationship Allah Ta'ala says people. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not opened the door. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not opened the door. So Sayyidina Rasulullah he him, he wanted to know. So he asked Sayyidina Bilal. I mean, this is one of the reasons I also love Sayyidina Bilal Radatana. You know, if it was us, we would say, oh, how do I know? Or and many times the Sahaba did say that, right? I don't know. Allah Ta'ala's Messenger know best. But you sadad me. Huh? He's so simple and so true. Allah Akbar Sayyidina Bilal Radatana was so simple, so true, so sincere. He started thinking, right? He started thinking that, yo, what is it that I do? Due to which these, uh, my footprints are coming in Jannah. So he thought about it and he then he replies, this is then the hadith, right? That he replies to Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? And the reply is not what maybe me and you would think that, oh, I pray Fajr Salah or I read the Quran. I mean, these are standard things, right? This is not something of honor. For us today, we live in sort of the end of times that this would be a great honor. Hmm? So Sayyidina Bilal al-Watanu, he said that, well, the only thing I can find, again, I'm sort of paraphrasing and summarizing, is that never do I perform a tahara, and by that, the words of the hadith, they mean a wudu, except that I pray with that, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that I pray with it. Allahu Akbar. Hmm? So it means this is clearly this wasn't an instruction. This is not something that Sayyidina Rasulullah he taught Sayyidina Bilal. Radiallahu ta'ala an. So also this, these, these stories of the Sahaba also show us that we have to make our we have to have our own feelings and our own way within obviously the boundaries and rules of Sharia not with any bidah but there is also our own way of expressing our feelings for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like that other sahabi, he said, Rabbana lakal hamd, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. He added these words, right? When standing up from ruku and qawma. It's not that Sayyidina Rasulullah he taught it, but Sayyidina Rasulullah he heard it and he witnessed how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels loved it. So this is Sayyidina Bilal wa ta'ala anhu. Hmm? That's why you have to be dynamic and proactive in your adhkar and focus on the feeling. So here I remember this is it because I was saying that to, and then we can just follow this, this uh, if you will call it a sunnah. Maybe you will be confused if I use a term like a ada, uh, a habit of Sayyidina Bil, uh, Bilal with Allah. So what we should do is I'm wake up in the morning and we're going to get ready anyway. Pray two rakats, or even let's make that niyyah. Maybe it's only going to be two for us. But why not we can make that niyyah that, Ya Allah, I'm going to stand on the masala. I will pray whatever you decree me to pray. Maybe I know I have to leave and catch the train and I only have time for two. But why not make that niyyah? You know, when you make that niyyah, you open heart. Sometimes Allah will make you pray four. So here, I was saying that another way that we need to change in our relationship, we can help us change that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is salah. And the last thing I'm going to mention because we're going to keep it short is du'a. Du'a was a major thing, right? And and if you see, really, this is really the same list that many of you would have made for yourself or heard from different ulama that these are the things they need to do in Ramadan. And that's why I'm trying to now go back to that list and edit the title and remove out remove the words in Ramadan, <laughs> right? 
So and go back to all go back to the list that everybody's sending around things to do in the last ten days and just edit the title now and remove last ten days. These are things to do. <laughs> These are things to do. <laughs> this is the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses. Fail. Hmm? Sometimes it's bimakana ya malun and sometimes bimak yaf alun and the yaf alun is stronger in some ways. Okay. So they're fa'ilin. These are things that we need to do. So we should make more dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, if you think about it rationally, you need dua more outside Ramadan than you do in Ramadan. Right? If you look at our spiritual condition in Ramadan and you look at our spiritual condition outside Ramadan, we're actually more needy of dua outside Ramadan, but we make more dua inside Ramadan. And obviously tonight is one of those very, very special nights of to do all of these ibadat and, and salawat and many things that I'm not mentioning because of shortage of time. But maybe I should add that because that is very important. So salawat ala rasul. Because as I was saying, you have to be connected to kitab Allah, to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must be connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And that is to ittiba of his sunnah following his sunnah, his model, his practice, his teachings, his virtue, his character, and by reciting salawat. So sunnah and salawat. Salawat durtrif, yani. Sunnah and salawat. And again, maybe we won't be able to keep up that quantity we had in Ramadan. Or I would even suggest that sometimes what happens to a person, unconsciously, but maybe now when you look back at the month, you might find yourself having this reflection that in this month maybe some of us we spent so much time in extra salat taraweeh, praying salat al-tasbih reciting Quran reading Quran some of us are trying to memorize some more Quran right making lots of dua that maybe actually we didn't recite so many salawat on Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa in this month and if you find that alhamdulillah there's still two three days nights left and maybe correct that balance uh, and recite abundant salawat on Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it actually has a connection to dua because you remember in the hadith that one sahabi, he asked Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi how much of my dua should be salawat, right? And here the ulama of hadith have commented a lot, but one literal way to read the hadith is almost like all of the dua should just be salawat and not dua, right? Okay, but obviously uh, in terms of our amal and because Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu himself taught us du'as to make and it has been the practice of Sahaba and all of the Salihin to make du'a and not only you know, not, not to never make du'a and only make salawat but it shows you the importance okay and now so that's another way to be, uh, change our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is improve our relationship with Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by following his sunnah and reciting more and abundant salawat and the last thing not the last thing but the last thing for just today's talk uh, about how we can improve our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bring about that change is dua so I'm actually going to end tonight by doing something I've never done uh, well, before I do that yes I want to I will do this very quickly two du'as I had in mind that there were going to be two du'as that I would try to explain to you because I think they're two du'as that we should really try to make a habit uh, I've tried often to recite these two du'as every day and pray these two salah so one is uh, the dua that is prayed after Salatul Haja. So it comes in hadith that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that if somebody has a haja, has a need, a difficulty, they're in dire circumstances or even any small need as we know from another hadith as simple as uh, that your shoelace is broken. That whoever is in need should make wudu well and then perform two rakahs of salah and they should then praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then send salawat on his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are all the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hadith. And then recite the following dua. So it's I, wonderful if you can pray the two rakahs, but I actually have made this dua generally also just a habit uh, that even if I can't pray those two rakahs for some reason, uh, I still try to make this dua. So this is the dua that is offered after salat al-hajjah. La ilaha illallah al-halimul kareem. 
Okay, if I explain this in detail, it would take a long time, maybe inshallah at some other time. Uh, but very briefly, you will understand La ilaha illallah, there is no deity except Allah, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Halim. And it's very interesting that this is the very first attribute we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as taught by the Prophet sallallahu when we are in a state of haja. Right? One is because we ourselves need some of that hilm to bear with this need. Right? Inshallah, one day we should inshallah. Or khair, there will be many ulama who would have explained this and you can try to learn about it. But it's important to really go through these du'as in detail so we understand them deeper and that help that understanding helps us ignite the feeling when we make those du du uh, these du'as okay, but when a person is in you know one at one one aspect of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what Sayyidina Rasulullah he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said taqalluku bi khulukillah that try to adorn your heart with the attributes of the attributes mentioned in Asma al-Husna doesn't mean at the divine level. It means at whatever human reflection or lesson is to be taken. In other words, the fact that Allah SWT is Al-Harim means that I should be Abdul Halim. And if I'm Abd of that being who is Al-Harim, I should also try to have Hilm in myself. This is what it means. And when do I need Hilm? So Hilm, hilm means, sorry, Hilm means forbearance. It means the ability to endure without being impatient or lashing out, right? And you, we need that in times when we're in need, right? When we're in need. Another way, another reason why this word is uh, this attribute of Allah is mentioned because Allah Subhanahu is the being who is beyond need, right? Uh, sorry, uh, I'll come to that later. Al Karim, Al Karim is the attribute of Allah Subhanahu Taala who is generous. And he is that being who is beyond any need, and rather he is so generous, he fulfills everybody's needs. Okay, so the dua starts, La ilaha illallah al-halim al-kareem. Subhanallah rabbil arsh al -adeem. So we've already explained the benefit of saying subhan. And Allah subhanahu wa being the rub of the arsh al -adeem, here is to indicate a sakanai of Allah Ta'ala's might and majesty and sovereignty over everything and all affairs and all matters, including whatever matter and circumstance of need and dire circumstances that I am in. That Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, that Alhamd, see you saw it, that you just saw it right now what I said earlier. Tasbih and then hamd. Subhanallah Rabbil Arsh al Adim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. As'aluka mujibati rahmatik. I ask you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of those things, literally means that which would make your rahmah wajib. Right? But obviously there's nothing that can make anything wajib in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a literal way, because Allah does al-mustaghni. What it means is that those things that would really invite and attract your mercy. Alright? But technically, literally, that's what mujibat means. Right? So what does it mean? That it means, okay, look, I'm making the dua, but I also want to change my life in a way that my lifestyle and my actions are such that they attract your rahma. Wa azaima magfiratik. Okay, so azaima here means actually azam from from the behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means Allah subhanahu's immense, incredible, intense resolve to send his immense, limitless magfira forgiveness on us. Wa ghanimata min kulli bir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek from you ghanima, right? So you might remember that al ghanima is also used for mal al fay, right? What is called the war spoils. So al ghanima means, how can you say, like a full share of the vic of the victorious spoils. Min kulli bir. So remember the ayatul bir and Quran from bir, from every virtuous act, every virtuous deed. So in other words, the ability to do virtuous deeds is like a treasure, is a ghanima. وَالسَّلَامَةَ مِنْ كُلِّ إِثْمِ And Allah Ta'ala, I ask you to make me salim, to protect me, to make me free, pure, pristine from every ithm, from every sin. لَا تَدَعْ لِي ذَنْبًا إِلَّا غَفَرْتَ Okay, so ithm, uh, do not leave any sin of mine except إِلَّا غَفَرْتَهُ that you have forgiven it. وَلَا هَمَّنْ إِلَّا فَرَّجْتَ not any ham. So ham is a grief, worry, concern that is weighing in my heart. Illa farrajtahu. 
What does it mean? That no worry except that you relieve it. So no, do not leave any let, do not leave any son of mine unforgiven or any worry or grief of mine unrelieved. Wala hajatan hiya laka ridan, and no need of mine, and that need of mine is such that therein lies rida your pleasure. So I don't want something that I need that is my pleasure or dunya, but you're not pleased that I should have it. I want you to fulfill every need of mine that is in your pleasure and you are pleased to fill that illa kadaytaha except that you decide, determine, fulfill that need for me. Ya arhamar rahimeen O oh, the most merciful one of the merciful ones. So this is a dua and again if we combine it with the earlier thing I said praying two rakahs in the morning then we can make niyat that Allah subhanahu wa fulfill any and all of our minor and major deeds in that day and in our life. So there's one dua, then there's a second dua, and then inshallah we're going to make dua. So the second dua I wanted to highlight today, because these are two very, very important duas. The second dua is Sayyidul Istighfar. So I'll just go over this very briefly. So again, Sayyidina Rasulullah, he sallallahu alayhi wa he taught in this an hadith, that, we, that whoever recites this dua, whether in the day or in the night, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of their sins, if, and they pass away in that day, if they recite it, you know, or at night, they pass away before morning, that they will be amongst the Ahlul Jannah, in other words, from the inhabitants of heaven. So, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant. So, if you saw the first dua we, we talked, had the tasbih and the hamd, here you have the tahleel. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant. Oh Allah, you are my rab, anta rabbi. La ilaha illa ant. And there is no God except for no deity, God except for you. Khalaqtani. You are the very being who created me in the first place. Wa ana abduka and me, I am your slave and creature. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastatatu. And as much as I was able, I tried to abide by the promise and covenant of yours that I had made a pact upon with you. Which means this pact of Iman, this pact of Islam, this pact of obedience and submission and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. bika min sharri ma sanatu. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of what I have perpetrated, what I have committed. Sanatu is also a play that earlier khalaqtani, you created me. Sona is also a type of creation in terms of the sinful act that I created. Right? My wrongdoings. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya. I fully acknowledge the ni'mas, the bounties, blessings, graces that you have bestowed upon me. Wa abu ubi dhambi. And at the same time, I fully acknowledge and confess and testify to my sins. Faghfir li. So please forgive me. Fa innahu la yaghfirul dhunuba illa ant. For indeed, he is that being, right? Uh, for indeed, no one can forgive sins except for you. So it's a very important du'a. And again, in these du'as, to linger and to ponder and to pause on p words and phrases. And sometimes you can even interpolate your own words in your own language and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we had to end tonight... This is what I was going to share with you. I'm going to, which I don't, well, never done in public, but I did once upon a time do public in a very different way. And this is actually why I wanted to, in a way, perhaps correct that or let's say improve on that or clear. So, inshallah, I'm going to make dua with the Asma al Husna, but in a very simple way. And I'm going to share with you the method. And so really I want you to focus on the method and adopting that method for yourself because I will be doing it in my own way. And that is to take a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on whatever comes into your heart at that moment uh, based on the meaning of that name. And your relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being an abd of Him in terms of his possessing that sifat, that attribute. And in terms, for those names where that applies, of adorning ourselves with the attribute 
uh, related to that name in the manner appropriate. So there's no particular one way to make this du'a. Uh, and this is something that any and all of you can try uh, and make this du'a on your own. Uh, and then inshallah, I also, second thing I want to do tonight is then after this du'a of the Asma al-Husna, we will make a collective du'a, but it will be silent in the sense that I will, and I hope I do it correctly, I will mute the mic, my mic, and then all of us should just make du'a. And you know, obviously you can sign off, and if you, those of you listening later can sign off. Uh, and I won't make it very long again, because I know it's the 27th night, and we all have to make our own individual du'as. But here what I wanted to do also, I think it's important that sometimes when we make du'a collectively, that we can also be silent, but still be collective. So it won't be individual du'a, because that's each of us are making our own du'as. But we'd all be making du'a, but nobody, including myself, no one is audible. No one is, so to speak, leading the du'a. Uh, and others are saying, Amin. But all of us will make du'a for all of us. Each, and obviously I want all of you to make du'a for me also. And my... and my parents and children and family and for everybody's uh, parents and children and family who are silently making dua whether they listen live or later and for all of the ummah and that way we're all individually making our own dua with no one leading it no one saying amin but we're still collectively making dua that we're doing it together all for one another all with one another and for all the ummah Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah akbar. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. La ilaha illallah, wa ahtahu la sharika, la lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu, yuhi wa yumitu bi yadihi al-khair, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Subhanallah, ya Allah, all glory is to you, every glory is to you. Forgive us for all the times that we made the world glorious to us, we made our nafs glorious to us, we made our own wishes and desires glorious to us. Subhanallah, all and every glory is only and only and ever and eternally for you. Alhamdulillah, all praises to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise to you, Ya Rabb, you Rabb of all of the Alameen. And still you chose to be our Rabb. Praise to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing in us that we have that is praiseworthy. Any goodness in us only comes from you. Any good deeds we did was only from your tawfiq. Forgive us, Ya Rabb, for ever thinking ourselves to be praiseworthy. La tuzakki an puzahum. Forgive us for ever thinking ourselves to have had tazkiyah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, forgive us for ever have even looking at the dunya with even a single glance of praise. Alhamdulaka. All hamd is to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the one and the one and the only Allah, the one and only ilah, the one and only Rabb, the one and only ma'bud, the one and only maqsood and mahbub and matloob and maghub of our hearts. Ya Rabbi Kareem, forgive us for straying from your oneness. Forgive us from ever making any shirik to you. Forgive us for all the shirki khafi that we have made in our lives. Ya Rabbi Kareem, let us live all our lives upon tawheed. Let the lives of our children and progeny and descendants always be on tawheed. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you to revive the true teachings of tawheed than all of the Ummah and all of Insan. Wallahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're the greatest of the great. Ya Rabbi Kareem, increase our hearts in feeling the immense greatness that you are in the greatness of your Quran al-Kareem, the greatness of your hukum and your command, the greatness of Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatness of the Sharia and the Deen of Islam. And Ya Rabbi Kareem, enable us to follow it and to obey it and to be passionate about Ya Rabbi Kareem. Huwallahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa ar-Rahman 
Ya Rahman, Ya Allah, you are the most merciful one. Ar Rahim, Ya Rahim, you are the being of immense mercy and who showers all of his mercy. Rabbi Kfir, Warham wa Anta Khairu Rahimin. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Arham ar Rahimin. We ask you to send all of your mercy on us, all of your mercy on our hearts. Wipe all our sins away with your mercy. Send all of your mercy on the Ummah. Wipe away all the injustice and oppression from this Ummah out of your mercy. Accept our deeds in this month out of your mercy. Al Maliku, Al Maliku. Ya Maliku, Ya Maliku, Ya you are the master, the owner, the sovereign. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you have mastery over us. Ya Rabbi Kareem, enable us to submit to your dominion, submit to your sovereignty, obey each and every one of your commands. You are Maliki Yomidin. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you will be Malik on that day, and you are Malik ever and always. Ya Rabbi Kareem, on that day of judgment, we ask that you make us present ourselves in front of you, that we were an up to you, that we submitted to you, that we submitted to you as our master, that we were your true slaves al Qudus. Ya Rabbi Kareem you are free and holy and perfect and pristine from any and all imperfections Ya Rabbi Kareem you are pristine you are Qudus your Quran is Qudus your Sharia is Qudus Ya Rabbi Kareem we are the ones who are full of blemishes full of imperfections full of impurities Ya Rabbi Kareem forgive us for soiling and staining this deen Ya Rabbi Kareem we ask that you out of your Rahman and mercy free our book of deeds from all of its blemishes and imperfections and all of its flaws and egregious sins and evils As-salam Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the one who is the being of As-salam, of complete and absolute peace. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak ya dhul jalali wal ikram Ya Rabbi Kareem, I ask that you send the salam on us, put peace in our hearts put peace in our lives, put peace in our relationships, put peace in our societies put peace in the Muslim Ummah grant us peace with the all of insan al-mu'minu. Ya Rabbi Kareem you are the bestower of iman the guardian of iman, the protector of iman, al muhaymin the protector of Iman, the sanctifier of Iman. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we, our Iman is an amanat that you bestowed upon us. Ya Rabbi Kareem, let us return this amanat to you. Keep us ever and always on Iman. Make our children our descendants upon Iman. Al-Azizu, Al-Jabbaru. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are Al-Aziz, Almighty, Al-Jabbar, with overwhelming and overpowering force and power. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Subhanaka Rabbi Al-Aziz. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we do your tasbih, we profess your mightiness, forgive us Ya Rabb, when we forgot your mightiness, and let our mighty nafs make us follow our mighty desires. You are Al-Jabbar, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you have the power to overwhelm us and overcome us, but still Ya Rabb, you have refrained and given us yet another chance to make toba on these special nights. Ya Rabbi Kareem, accept our toba on these nights. Al-Mutakabbir, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the one who knows best your kibriyai, you are the ones who can best profess your magnificence and greatness. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we praise you as only you can praise yourself. We magnify your magnificence and your greatness in your kibrai as only you can magnify your greatness. Al Khaliqul Bari'u. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the one who created us. Ya Rabbi, we are unworthy of your creation. We have ended up as those of Bani Adam who truly spread that facade on Ard that the angels were concerned about. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we are so grateful to you to have created us. Al Bari and to have shaped and evolved us. Al Musawwiru to have fashioned us into this image that you have given us. We do shukr, Ya Rab. We are grateful to you for every outward form of our creation. We want to submit every aspect of our limbs and organs and every aspect of us that you created. We want to submit each and everything of it for you. Al Ghaffaru, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the being who is the most forgiving. You love to forgive. None can forgive except for you. These are the nights of Ramadan. These are the nights of forgiveness. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we have brought to you immense mountains of sins that could only be wiped away by the power of your forgiveness. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins. Al-Qaharu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you have the control and power and might over each and everything. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you control and you uh, you assert your control and power over the forces of injustice in this world and protect us from the injustice of our nafs. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khairu man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are al-qahar over our nafus, over our nafsi amara Ya Rabbi Kareem, I ask that you do our tazkiyah 
Al-Wahhabu. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the one who bestows and gives so much. Ya Rabbi, we are grateful to you for all that you have given us. But we are needy, Ya Rabbi. We need more, Ya Rabbi. We need more of the rahmat that you sent on us in Ramadan. We need more of the tawfiq to make ibadah that you gave us in Ramadan. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you are Al-Wahhab. Do Wahhab bestow upon us every care, every beer, every virtue, every good deed, every good character. Ar-Razaku, Ya Rabbi, you have given us every morsel to eat since we were created, every drop to drink since we were created. You give us and provide for us in every iftar that we fasted. Ya Rabbi Kareem, so many times we've turned to focus on the asbab and we forgot about you, we forgot to thank you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you have ever and always been Ar-Razak with us. Ya Rabbi, grant us risk halal and tayyibah, grant us pure and lawful wealth, Ya Rabbi. Let us have so much risk that we can share that risk in sadaqah and khirat for this sake of this Ummah, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al-Fattahu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, the opener, the conqueror. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you opened, we ask that you open the knots that are on our heart due to our sins. We ask that you open the knots on our understanding and give us true ilm of deen. Al-Alimu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you know everything that we did in secret, everything that is contained in our sudur, in our breasts. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you forgive us, Ya Rabbi. Forgive us for all that you know. Forgive us that we have even forgotten. And Ya Rabbi, we ask that you grant us ilm nafi, grant us the beneficial knowledge of deen, deep knowledge of deen increases in our knowledge of Qur'an al-Kareem the meanings of Qur'an al-Kareem the feelings of Qur'an al-Kareem the meanings of the hadith and the sunnah of Nabi al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the meanings and the lessons from the seed of Nabi al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-qabidu Ya Allah, you are the one who can constrict and restrict. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we seek refuge in you. And we ask that any time that you may constrict our spiritual state, let it only be a lesson for us. Let it only be a temporary state through which only we emerge from it only to honor you and to love you and to seek you even more. Al-Basitu, Ya Rabbi, you give, you are... You are the one who extends through a span. We ask that you give us basit rahmah and basit risk that you send the widest possible extent of your mercy and your risk upon us. Ar-Rafi'u, Ya Rabbi, you are the one who exalts and raises. Wa rafa'na laka dhikrak, Ya Allah, we ask that you exalt and raise the status of Nabi Akrim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the world and in our hearts so that we follow his sunnah more and we follow his knife more. And Ya Rabbi, we ask that you raise the status of the mu'mineen and grant them izan this world world, take us out from the dhilla of our sins, the dhilla of the fitna of media and society and fashion, and Ya Rabbi Kareem raise us and exalt us through ilm and amal and ikhlas upon deen. Al-Mu'izzu Ya Allah, you are the giver of izzah, protect us from every dhilla, grant us the izzah of taqwa, grant us the izzah of tahara. Al-Mudhillu Ya Rabbi, you are the granter of disgrace and dishonor. Ya Rabbi, ask that you protect us from every disgrace and dishonor. Forgive us for all the times we disgraced and dishonored ourselves. Forgive us for ever being the cause of disgrace and dishonor to someone else. Ya Rabbi, let us always be in Izza, be a source of Izza, be a person of Izza. Take us out from every dhilla. as Ya Allah, you are the one who hears everything. You are all hearing. Ya Allah, we ask that you hear the secret pleas of our heart. Hear, Ya Allah, we ask you to hear the cries of the oppressed. Ya Allah, we ask you to hear the pleas of the downtrodden and send your rahmah upon us. Al-Basiru, Ya Rabbi, you are all seeing and ever seeing. You see what we do. You see what we have committed. Ya Allah, but still you are Halim and Ya Allah, you see all the injustices in this world. Ya Allah, we ask you, you always make us Amdul Basir. Let us remember every time that you were gazing upon us that we are on your watchful gaze, that you are Raqib on us, Basir on us al hakamu ya Allah, you are the ultimate judge who makes the permanent decisions ya Allah, that we ask on the day of judgment that you are also al adlu and that you uh, that you will judge us certainly with your absolute wisdom and justice but ya Allah, we ask that you temper your justice with your mercy in our case and that you forgive us on the day of judgment ya rab and that you enable us to be true and just with others and you make us always make hukum or make every decision that we make in our life according to the sharia ya rab bi kareem al latifu ya rab you are the sublime subtle being and you you have a sublime aspect that only you and yourself know Ya Khafi Lutfi Ya Drikni Bilutfik Al Khafi Ya Rabbi Kareem we ask that in the deepest moments of our ibadah in the tender moments of our sujood in the nights when we turn to you in dhikr and remembrance Ya Rabbi that we grant you that you grant us the lutf of your remembering you not for the sake of any outward pleasure but for the inner contentment sukoon and itminan that we will feel if we feel that we are close to you Al Khabiru Ya Allah you are all aware 
ever aware, intensely aware. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you make us aware of the tricks and deceptions of shaitan. We ask that you make us aware of the tricks and de- deceit of our own nafs. We ask that you make us aware of the immense commandments of the Sharia. Al Halimu Ya Rabb, you have been so Halim with us, so forbearing with us. We ask that you continue, Ya Rabb, to be Halim with us and never seize us with your immediate punishment for sins that we have done and increase us in our hilm and tahammal with others. Let us be forbearing and kind and forgiving with others in our life. al Adimu Ya Rabb Increase the azmat for you in our heart. The azmat of Quran Al-Kareem The azmat of Deen The azmat of Sharia al Ghafuru Ya Rabbi Kareem You are the super forgiving the intensely forgiving Ya Rabbi al Ghafar and Al-Ghafoor and we have brought sins for both of these attributes Ya Rabbi Ya Rabbi we ask that you send all of your maghfara on us all of your maghfara on all of the Ummah Ash-Shukuru Ya Rabbi you are so kind that you have revealed your this aspect of yours to us that you are a shukur that you honor and appreciate the deeds that we do that you accept our shukur to you ya allah you said in quran al-kareem wa qalilun min ibadi ash-shukur that there are few of your servants that are shukur ya allah make us from those few make us truly always ever grateful to you thankful to you appreciative to you make us also ever thankful and grateful and appreciative to everyone in this world who is in even anything small to us especially our parents and teachers Ya Rabbi Kareem Al Aliyu Ya Rabbi You are the high And the exalted Give us tawfiq To lower ourselves In sujood and ibadah And submit our wishes And commands To your exalted uh, uh, Submit our wishes To your exalted commands Al Kabiru Ya Allah You are great You are tremendous You are awe inspiring And awesome Ya Rabbi Kareem Let us view this dunya As saghir Let us view everything Other than you as saghir And let us per- Profess your tawheed in being only and only that you are Al Kabir. Allah Hafidu, Ya Allah, you are the guardian, the protector, the safeguarder. Ya Rabbi, keep us always in your hifaza. Keep our iman in your hifaza. Keep our a'mal in your hifaza. Ya keep our parents and children and friends and ummah in your hifaza, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al Muqitu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the commander and controller of everything. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you command and control our nafs and bring it onto obedience. Al Hasibu, Ya Rabbi, truly, you are the one who will do every hisab on the day of judgment. We ask that Ya Rabb you be light with us on that day and Ya Allah you and ask we ask that you give us tawfiq that we should be less reckoning with others we should be more forgiving of others and Ya Allah we ask as you said in Quran that you will bestow upon the sabirin بغير hisab that you will give them a reward without any hisab and that you can give risk without hisab tonight Ya Rabb we ask for all your rahmah and risk and karam and fazl without any hisab Al Jalilu Ya Rabb you are majestic and mighty and have a splendid Tender, Ya Rabb, to, to, to which we can only do tasbih and hamd and glorify you for your splendor and majesty, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al Kareemu, Ya Rabbi, you've been so Kareem with us. You said in Quran to all insan, Ma gharraka bi Rabbik al Kareem. And truly, Allah, so many things have deluded us and diverted us from you. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you protect us from all those delusions, all those diversions, that you increase your karam on us, make us Kareem to one another, make us kind, benevolent, generous to one another. Al-Raqib, Ya Allah, you are the intensely watchful one. You've kept an intense watch on us. Ya Allah, forgive us for all the sins that we did under your watch. Accept any small deeds we may have offered under your watch. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Al-Mujibu. Ya Rabbi, you are Mujibu Ta'wat. You are the one who answers and hearkens to the call of the plea when he pleads and makes du'a and supplicates to you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask for your ijaba, Ya Rabbi. We ask that you ijaba for our spirit. Fast, your ijaba for our prayers, your ijaba for our du'as, your ijaba for any good deed that we did. And we ask this not just for us, but for the whole ummah. Ya Allah, we ask this for those from the ummah who have become distant from you, who have become far from you, who don't even turn to you and call upon you. But Ya Allah, even if all of them never called upon you, you would still always be al-mujib. You are still the one who replies. Ya Allah, we ask that you reply to every call of the caller. But we ask, Ya Rabb, that even you reply to those who are unable or incapable of calling upon you. al Hakim, al Wasu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the one who gives and je- with wus'a and bestows with wus'a and has an unlimited capacity. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you grant us a wafir shir. You are Dhu Fadlin Adim, Dhu Fadlin al Mu'mineen. And now we ask that you make us also be Abdul Wase, that you make us wasi, make us extend the wings of our mercy 
to our friends and family and to all of society and humanity. Al Hakim, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the most wise, and we have left the hukmah of the Sunnah. Ya Rabbi, ask that you can each and every one of us the understanding the hikmah of Quran Kareem, the hikmah of Sunnah of Nabi Kareem, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hikmah of the Sharia, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al Wududu, Al Wududu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Al Wudud. You are the most tender, loving, affectionate, benevolent Rabb. We are Abdul Wudud. We are so honored to be an Abd, the servant and slave of such a loving being. Ya Rabbi Kareem, send all your Wudda and your love upon our hearts on this night and this month in our whole life. And let us increase in our Mawadda and love and tenderness for all of those you have placed in our life. Al Majidu, Ya Rabbi, you have a Majd. You have a majestic reverence and veneration. Ya Rab, we venerate you, we honor you, we respect you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, let every let you and you alone be that which we venerate and respect and honor in our life. Al Ba'ithu, Ya Rab, you are the one who will resurrect us on that day. We ask that you resurrect us in a way that we are smiling upon you and that you're smiling upon us. We ask that you resurrect us on, on that day so that we meet Nabi Akrim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he recognizes us and offers us his shifa and the water from the Hosea Kothar, Ya Rab, Akrim. As Shahidu, Ya Rab, you are the ever aware, the ever present, the omni witnesser, the omni testifier. Ya Rab, Akrim, we say our shahada to you. Ashadu Allah, ilaha ilaha. Allahu wa ashadu anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasulu Ya Rabbi Kareem we ask that you bear witness to this test of week this, this testimony of iman that we have offered to you we ask that you bear witness to our iman on the day of judgment and that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bear witness to our iman on the day of judgment Ya Rabbi Kareem we ask that Ya Rab, that all of insan get tawfiq and hidayah from you to accept the shahada Ya Rab. Al Hakku Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the real, the actual, the true, the veracious. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you to enable us to understand that everything other than you is just fleeting and temporary and ephemeral. And we ask that you unite us upon Al Haq, that you guide us, give us hidayah on Al Haq, protect us from every batil, every kilb, every falsehood, every everything that is untrue and you're up there so many things that have been untrue about our own selves we ask that you remove the untrue parts of us and re- and make us solid and firm about upon the truth of our iman the truth of our being your abd al wakilu ya rabbi kareem you are al wakil you are our guardian hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil ya rabbi kareem you are enough for us and you are the most wonderful amazing wakil ya rabbi kareem we place all our matters we do all our tawakkul upon you we place all our matters and affairs in you and we have complete trust that you will guide our matters and affairs and ya rabbi kareem we ask that you enable us that if you put anyone in a Wakalat under us, be that a child, be that an orphan, be that an employee, be that a worker. Ya Rabbi, that we take that responsibility and we honor it truly and we fulfill its duties sincerely. Al Qawiyu, Ya Rabbi, you are Qawi. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. You are Al Qawi, you are the being of all might and power. We have no power except for you. Ya Rabbi, Kim, let us always submit and testify to your power. And Ya Rabbi, we ask that you take out from us any and all quwa to do sin and evil. And you grant us all quwa and power and ability to do virtues and good deeds. Al Matinu, Ya Rabbi, Kim, you are the one who has a established permanence and firmness in your power al qawiyul mateen ya rabbi kareem you granted us from your tawfiq and karam a power to do good deeds in this month of ramadan ya rabbi kareem make it firm now in us make it permanent in us grant us istikama ya rabbi kareem al waliyu ya rabbi kareem you are the wali you are the benevolent kind loving friend allahu waliyu alladhina amanu allahu waliyu mu'minin ya rabbi kareem you are our wali ya rabbi kareem we also want to be your wali ya rabbi forgive us for failing to honor all the love and friendship and guardianship that you bestowed upon us and ya rabbi kareem let us be awliya to one another let us be loving friends to one another al hamidu ya rabbi you are ultimately entirely absolutely praiseworthy Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, uh, Rab, all hamd and praise to you, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al Muhsi, Ya Rab, you are the one who records the deeds, and Ya Rab, we ask that you record our deeds. Even though they may be nakis and they may have flaw. And Ya Allah, we ask that you erase the record of our sins on this night through our seeking forgiveness and istighfar and make grant us tawfiq to make true tawbah to you. Al-Mubdi'u, Ya Allah, you are the beginner, originator, 
uh, original instigator of each and every matter. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you grant us every good beginning and every new endeavor that we undertake. We ask that you enable us always to begin in your name and for your sake and with salutations on Nabi Kareem, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Mu'idu, Ya Allah, you are the one who restores and returns. Ya Allah, we lost our haya, we ask that you return it to us. We lost our akhlaq, we ask that you return to us. We lost our connection to you and you returned it to us. We ask that any time that we disconnect, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you restore and return our connection to you. Al-Muhyi, Al-Muhyi wal-Mumit. Ya Allah, you are the one who is the giver of life and the one who brings about death. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you bring life to our Iman, bring life to our hearts, bring death to our nafs amara Ya Allah, we are grateful to you to bring give for this gift of life. And we ask that you grant us a death upon Iman, a death upon Islam. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are Al-Hayyu Al-Qayyum. You are the ever-living, the eternally living, the self-subsistent, the entirely independent. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika nastaghith. Ya Al-Hayyu Qayyum, it is from your mercy that we seek help from you in all of our matters. And our greatest matters are a matter of deen, Ya Rabbi Kareem. And yet you are ever eternally living and you have no need for us, but we are ultimately needy of you, needy to be following deen. Grant us it, Ya Rab, Al-Wajidu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the being who brings into wujud, who brings into existence, Ya Rabbi Kareem, the same way you brought us into existence and you brought Iman into existence in our heart. Ya Allah, we ask that you bring taqwa into existence into our heart, bring every good deed into existence in our life. al Al-Majidu, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are Al-Majid, you are Al-Majid, you are the one of ultimate veneration and honor and status and respect. And Ya Allah, we ask, we, we are Abdul Majid and Abdul Majid, we always want to venerate and respect you. And Ya Allah, in this world, if anybody gives us any respect, let us know that we are unworthy of it and all respect belongs to you. Let us only honor the respect that anyone gives to us and use it only to connect them with you and you alone, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al-Wahidu, Ya Rabbi, you are the one and only the unparalleled, without partner, without equal. Ya Rabbi Kim, you, we ask that you make our hearts only and only and unparalleled inclined towards you. Al-Wahidul Ahadu, you are the one and equal only unparalleled and unrivaled and the only and the soul and the unicity of you we we profess from the bottom of our hearts Ya Rabbi Kareem As Samadu Ya Rabbi Kareem you are free from any want from any need but you know, we have needs and we turn to you to fulfill those needs of ours that are of pleasing to you Al Qadiru Ya Rabb you are Al Qadir make us Abdul Qadir Ya Rabbi Kareem you are the one with the might the power the authority the command the Qudra Ya Rabbi Kareem we ask that you enable us to submit to your Qudra and we ask that you apply your Qudra to Kamila on our nafs to make it pure Ya Rabbi Kareem Al Muqtadir you are the being who has the, who dynamically applies all the authority and power that they have. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you apply your power for us, for our khair, and that you protect us from shar. Al-Muqaddim, Al-Muqaddim, Al-Muqaddimu, Wal-Muakhiru. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are He, that being who alone has the power to bring something before or earlier to give it precedence, or to delay something, or to make it postpone, or make it to come at the end. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you grant taqdeem to all the khair in our life, and you grant takhir to all the shar in our life, such that it never even appears, Ya Rabbi Kareem. But Ya Rabbi, we ask that you make for us you and obedience to you muqaddam in our life and to make everything else even the duties and responsibilities and mundane realities of our al muakhir in our life and in our heart you are al awwalu wal akhiru ya allah you are the first and the last the one and only the one who is the first and pray pre eternally always has been and everything about you is baq and will never fade ya rabbi kareem we honor and praise you according to these attributes of yours al-zahiru wal batinu ya rabbi you are the being with the outward form uh, with the outward aspect that has manifest itself that the mercy of yours that is manifest the generosity of yours that is manifest al but you have mercies that are unknown and hidden and inner that only you know and generosity that you only know Ya Rabbi ask that on this special night that you grant us the zahir of your rahmah the batin of your rahmah the zahir of your maghfira the batin of your maghfira the zahir of your karam the batin of your karam the zahir of your mawadda and mahabba and the batin of your mahabba and mawadda the zahir and batin of your wilaya 
Yet it became and grant us the understanding of the outward aspects of deen, the inner realities of deen. Yet we ask that you change our zahir and make it according to the Quran, Sharia, and Sunnah. We ask that you change our batin and make our inner self according to the Quran, Sunnah, and Sharia. Al Wali, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the Wali, the being who is the Wali, Mutawalli, the 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 liege Lord, uh, the liege Lord with dominion and and, and, and the master and each and every one of us, Ya Rabbi, we are simply your clients and slaves. Al Al Muta'ali and Ya Rabbi, you are Al Muta'ali, you are exalted and transcended far above your worldly creation. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that our simple fragile human hamd and tasbih we ask we present that tasbih and hamd to soar up and above to reach your exalted self and we ask that in your exalted self you find us to be from your ibad and from your obedient servants and slaves ya rabbi kareem al bir al ya rabbi kareem you are the one who treats with bar and kindness and tenderness ya rabbi kareem make us abdul bar ya rabbi kareem let us we want every aspect of your kindness let us adorn ourselves with kindness let us be beings of kindness and extreme and absolute kindness to others At-Tawwab Ya Rabbi Kareem You said in Quran In Allah Yuhibbut Tawwabin That you love those Who ever turn to you In repentance And now we know That you are At-Tawwab That you are ever And often relenting Towards us And turning towards us To accept our repentance Ya Tawwab Accept our Tawbah On this night Ya Tawwab As much and as ever And as eternally You are turning to us Make us also Constantly making Tawbah And Inaba And Ruju Towards you Al-Muntaqim Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the being of vengeance. You are Zu Intikam. Ya Allah, we seek refuge in you from your vengeance and your might. We accept and acknowledge that we are worthy of, we, we have done sins that have made us uh, worthy of the punishment of your vengeance. But Ya Allah, we ask you avert your vengeance from us. Ya Allah, we ask that you send your vengeance upon the Zalimin who have yet to make Tawbah. First, Ya Allah, we ask that you send your Hidayah on them so that they turn back from their Zulm. And if they do not respond to that Hidayah, then Ya Allah, we ask that you embrace them with your vengeance and protect us from them, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al-Afu Al-Ra'ufu Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are Afu Allahumma innaka Afu tuhibbu al-Afwa fa'afu anna. Ya Became with the blessing of the question of Umm al Mu'minin Sayyidah Ashir Badiyatan Anha and the answer of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We make this dua to you on this night, the odd nights, and, 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 and inshallah we'll continue making this dua to you. Allahumma inna ka afu. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the being who pardons, who loves to pardon, who loves to overlook. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we have anna. We ask that you pardon, overlook all of our sins and misdeeds. Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al Ra'uf, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are so affectionate and kind and loving with the believers and you described Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa also ra'uf with believers Ya Rabbi asked that you open up our minds and our hearts to accept and embrace all those kindnesses and we ask that you make us abdaroof and make us ra'uf and kind and gentle with others Malikul Mulk, Ya Rabbi Kareem, Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. This is your majesty, Ya Rabb. This is your honor, Ya Rabb. We are honored that you share these Asmaal Husna with us. We are only can only praise you with these names. Subhanaka Ya Malikul Mulk. Alhamdulillah Ya Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. Subhanallah Wal Hamdulillah Wa La Ilaha Illallah Wa Allahu Akbar. Al Muqsitu, Ya Rabb, you are the being of absolute justice. Ya Rabbi, we ask you enable us to be just with others, to be measured with others, to be balanced with others others. Al-Jami'u Ya Rab, you are the gatherer. Ya Rab, we ask that you gather all of your mercies on this night and send it on our heart. We ask that you you, you, you are al jame Ya Rabbi, ask that you gather and unite the hearts of the entire Ummah. al ghaniyu Ya Rab, only you and you are al ghani and al mustaghni We are Abdul Ghani and we are only your slaves. We have every need and you are absolutely free of need. And we turn to you in all of our need and ask you to fulfill our needs. And you are al ghani al mughni You are al mughni Ya Rab. You are the being of absolute bestowal of riches and treasures Ya Rabbi we ask you for every ghanima for every rich and treasure of deen Ya Rabbi Kareem al Maniu, Ya Allah you are the one who protects Ya Allah we ask Ya al Maniu, Ya Allah ask that you do mana we ask that you prohibit and forbid Jahannam from us Ya Rab we ask you on this night Ya Rab Allah Jannah Minanar that you rescue us from the fire of Jahannam that you 
prohibit and prevent and command every single flare and flame and drop of fire of Jahannam that you are mane of it ever touching us, ever reaching us. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you prevent shaitan from affecting us. We ask that you prevent and prohibit our nafs amara from affecting us. Ad-daru. Ya Rabbi Karim, you are the one who can bring calamity and distress upon an individual or a society. Ya Rabbi Karim, we submit between your might and we accept and acknowledge every wisdom that you and you alone possess about every disaster and distress that comes. But Ya Rabbi, we are weak, Ya Rabbi. We ask that you, anyone who is afflicted by a disaster, we ask that you raise them amongst the shuhada and the martyrs and we ask that you send your special mercy and hidayah and nur on the survivors and family, Ya Rabbi Karim. Anafiu, Ya Rab, you are the one who brings benefit, Ya Rab. Ya Rab, make this Iman a source of nafa for us. Make the Quran a nafa for us. Grant us ilmu nafa, Ya Rabbi Kareem. And make us ones who are give nafa to others, who benefit others. Forgive us for all the times that we were of harm to others. Ya Rab, forgive us for all the times that we were unable to benefit from the benefit of others. Ya Rab, remove all of the harm in us, all the harm from us, and able to honor all the benefit coming to us, enable us to always be of only benefit to others. An-Nur, Ya An-Nur, Ya Rab, you are Nur. Ya Rab, ask that you put Nur in our heart, Nur in our kalb, Nur in our ruh, as Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made Dua, put nur on our right, nur on our left, nur from the top, nur from the bottom, nur from the front, nur to the bottom. We ask that you drown us in our nur, and especially of the nur of your hidayah. Let us always walk in this world in the footsteps of the nur of your hidayah. Protect us from the dhulamat, the darknesses of misguidance, the darknesses of being astray. Ya Rabbi Karim, let us also be a guiding light to help others, and let us never cast shade or shadow or darkness on others. Al Hadi, Ya Allah, Al Hadi, Ya Hadi, Ya Rabbi Karim. Ya Allah, grant us hidayah on Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Grant us hidayah as to what is best for us in terms of our Akhir and our Deen. Grant us hidayah on those things that are safe for us in this dunya, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Grant us hidayah to guide us away from everything that is foul and profane and evil and sinful in this world. Al-Badi'u, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are the ultimate planner and originator. Ya Rabbi Kareem, you are Badi'u Samawati Wal Ard. Ya Rabbi, you are also our Badi, Ya Rabbi. We ask that you plan and decree our life from this moment forward to be a life of Taqwa and Tahara, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al-Baqi, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Al-Baqi, you are the eternal one. Ya Allah, we ask that you grant us Jannat, Ya Allah. We, grant us, we ask that you grant us your eternal pleasure. We ask that you grant us your eternal rada in Jannah, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Al-Warith, Ya Al-Warith. Ya Rabbi, you are the one who bestows inheritance Rabbi la tadarni farda wa anta khairul warithin Ya Rabbi Kareem do not leave us alone let our children be by our sides when we pass away from this world let our children and friends be supporters to us let us leave some sadaqa jariya in this world that will be a benefit from this ummah Ar-Rashid, Ya Rashid, Ya Allah, may grant us all the guidance and rushed of yours, the rushed towards A'mal Saleh and good deeds and good virtues, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Make us Abdul Rashid, surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so many times in our life you granted us guidance, but we spurned it or we failed to honor it or we betrayed it by following that guidance with our own sin. You granted us so much rushed in this month of Ramadan, let us remain truly guided. As-Sabur, Ya Sabur, Ya Allah, you have the most sabr with us. You are the most forbearing and patient with us. Ya Allah, we ask that, Ya Allah, you continue being patient with us as we know due to our weakness we will surely continue to sin. And we ask that you increase in our sabr with one another and that we help one another with tawasul bil haqti with tawasul bil sabr and that we help one another in the truth and enduring. Ya Allah, we ask, we called upon you, upon these 99 names of your beautiful Asmal Husna mentioned in hadith, but we know you have limitless, unlimited, infinite names and infinite beauties and infinite attributes and we call upon you by your ismi your ism azam your ism murfad Allah Ya Rabbi Kareem make that the most beautiful name make that the most beautiful sound for our heart grant us every sukoon and every serenity that is associated with your name we ask that you imprint and inscribe and engrave your name upon our spiritual heart and give us tawfiq to ever and always take your name with all reverence and love with your tongue Ya Rabbi we ask that you accept all our du'as and now we turn to you in du'a for ourselves and our families and our friends and all of the ummah Ya Rabbi Bikrim.
Subhanallah, he will humble the Nahi will lie, Nahi, and Allah will come and Allah will send the son of my brother, Kana Sidna, Muhammad, Vana, the Sidna, Muhammad, Kama Sunak to my brother, Kana, Brahim, Hana, and Ibrahim, and the Kami, the Majid. Yelim became a asset to accept all the doors we offered now and all the doors we ever offered at any time in our life, in the past, to the present, or the future. We ask that you accept all our doors for each and every one of us and each each other and all of the Ummah Yurim Bikrim. And if any doors and any one from the Sahaba Kiram, Radiallahu Ta'ala, Anbajamayin, or Siddiqin, Shahada Salin, or anyone from the Summa ever offered a dua that was pleasing to you and it would be appropriate for us, we ask and make all those duas for you as from you as well. And Yala, we ask all all the du'as that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made from you and we seek refuge in all the things that he sought refuge from and taught us to seek refuge from. Yala, we ask that you accept our du'as on this night. We ask that you accept our feelings on this day and night. And Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you make us from the muttaqeen, salihin, mu'mineen, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Rabbana takambal minna inna ka Ya Rabbi Kareem. And we ask that you accept all the du'as that any one of us may have asked one another to make from them at any point in our life. And Yala, we ask that you honor the request of uh, we ask that you give us tawfiq to honor one another and be more love and support to one another Ya Rabbi Kareem Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim wa tubu alayna inna ka anta tawabur rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Amin